now I want to get us started on setting up our artboard to begin designing and creating our repeat pattern. Let's go back to our designer gallery. We are going to create a new document on the document creation page. So we hit the plus button, select new document, and then we're going to change from points to pixels. And then we are going to create an artboard size that is 2000 by 2000 pixels at a 300 DPI. DPI is dots per inch. That's basically our resolution. We are going to keep the orientation as is. And then we are going to make sure we select create artboard. And then we are going to hit OK. Once we're in the document, we are going to take two fingers and pinch your screen in to kind of zoom out and drag our artboard over to the left. And then we're going to go into our documents menu and we are going to tap on artboards. So once we're there, we're going to drag our stylus across the background to create another artboard. And don't stress, we can go into our transform studio on the right hand side. Remember, you can click the little question mark and it'll pop up all the names of the different elements. So on the right hand side, we're going to go down to the transform studio and we are going to resize this so that the dimensions are exactly double our original artboard, which was 2000 by 2000. So we want it to be 4000 by 4000. And this allows us to create kind of like a live preview. And if you do something similar to what I just did, I like went to drag my finger across to zoom back out so I could see both. Um, but instead, I accidentally created an artboard just double like take two fingers and tap on the screen to undo so now we'll see the left hand artboard is artboard one the right hand artboard is artboard two this is going to be our live preview of what our actual repeat will look like and everything that we put on artboard one will basically show up on artboard two but we have a process to get to that point so what you want to do is we're going to create a rectangle on artboard one so on the lower left hand side right above your type tool you're going to select the rectangle tool and we are going to create a rectangle that goes over artboard one um, you can change the color to whatever you want i'm just going to make it something easy for you to see so i'm picking this teal blue make sure your fill and your stroke are the same and then I'm going to go back down to my transform tool to make sure that my rectangle is the or my square is the exact same size as the square of my artboard. So we'll go to my dimensions and we'll change this to 2000 and we'll change the height to 2000. And then if we go to our position, we want to make sure that they're both at zero zero so that they're in the upper left hand corner. And this basically places it exactly centered on the artboard and then take your stylus click outside to deselect now what we're going to do is create a symbol this symbol is what allows us to kind of create a preview of what our repeat will look like in artboard 2. so to create a symbol we're going to make sure that our square that we've created is selected and we're going to go to the symbol studio and this pulls up our symbol menu so what we're going to do is making sure that that rectangle or that square is still selected on the artboard. We are going to add a symbol from selection. To do that, you'll click on that little hamburger menu and we're going to select add symbols from selection. Then what we're going to do is we are going to hold down using our finger or our stylus and we're going to wait for the pop up that says copy and we're going to copy it and then we're going to select artboard two. And then you're going to hold your finger down on your screen and select paste. And we're going to do this three times after this so that we have a total of four squares. And basically this is going to fill our square here. The four blocks are basically the four corners of the artboard. And we're going to use now the transform studio to make sure that each square is exactly in the corner. The position should be zero zero for block one, 2000 zero for block two, and so on and so forth. So we're kind of going around in a clockwise motion to move these squares. And then 
We're gonna move the next one over to 2000 for X. I'm gonna make sure our Y is at zero. And then we're gonna select the last one and we're gonna move it to 2000 for X and 2000 for Y and it's gonna drag it down to that lower right hand corner. Now if you're noticing you have little white lines, just make sure that your Y markers are at zero for your upper sections. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it. So we're gonna select artboard one and basically this is the artboard where you'll be doing all of your pattern building. You wanna select a brush and then we can just draw something. So change the color of your fill and your stroke to whatever you'd like it to be. I'm gonna do white just so that it's something bright that pops. And if you wanna zoom in a bit, again, take both fingers and instead of pinching in, you're gonna kind of like push outwards and it'll zoom in. Now I'm gonna select a vector paint brush tool and I already have my color selected and I'm gonna create a shape on my board here. I'm gonna pick a brush that is a watercolor brush and then I'm gonna go into my stroke and I'm gonna make sure I increase the width of this so that it's something big and easily visible. And I'm just gonna start painting in the center. So once we've done that, you'll notice that nothing is popping up on our board too. The reason for this is because we have to drag that shape in the layers panel to the symbol layers so that it has that glowing orange line beside it that we see here in the layers function. So we're gonna take our stylus, click on the element in our layers, and we're gonna drag it so that it kind of goes right on top of that symbol square. And then you'll notice that all of the elements now pop up and repeat in exactly the same place. Um, only the elements that are on the symbols layer on the artboard one will show up on artboard two. So keep that in mind. Make sure you double check your layers panel if you ever have any trouble with like the preview not showing your elements. It's likely because it's not underneath your symbol element. So rather than basically repeating this process every single time, I, every single time that I create a pattern, I like to use this document as my master document and then I just copy it anytime I want to start a new one. So just go back in and delete your test shape, select your move tool, click on your shape and then select the little garbage pail in the lower left hand corner and it'll delete it. And then we're going to name this if we hit the back button in your upper left hand toolbar. We're going to get back to our Affinity Designer Gallery and we have our untitled file. We're going to select the hamburger menu on the lower right hand side of my file and we're going to select rename. And then we can rename this pattern master doc. And I'm going to list 2000 so that I know it's a 2000 by 2000 pixel. And then if I want to repeat this, as we're going to do for the next process of creating our repeat, I'm going to select the little hamburger menu again. I'm going to hit duplicate and then I'm going to rename it. And then I'm just going to rename it pattern file one because you're going to be making four of these for your final class project and then hit OK. And then you can just click on it whenever you want to open it up and then you'll be able to work on it here. All right, so now that we've created our master file for our repeat, let's jump into the process of actually creating our repeat. So now that we've created our master artboard, let's open it back up and we're gonna actually start to build out our repeat pattern. So to create your repeat elements, you can just play around with creating some shapes using the either the vector pen tool or the raster brushes, or in this case, what I'm showing you, um, which is probably the easiest way to start with is just creating some geometric shapes um, that 
can flow and fit together really easily. So I'm going to use the pen tool to create some simple geometric shapes and just basically kind of fill out my pattern shape as I go. So remember that you have to drag each shape to the symbols layer so that it has that glowing orange line beside it so that it shows up in your test artboard. What I like to do first is design the edges of my repeat and then basically move inwards to finish filling out the actual canvas. I'll use the pen tool to create my elements and I'll either put one element on the left edge of the canvas or um, in the bottom. To create a shape with the pen tool, you'll basically take your stylus and then you can just use your stylus to tap on your screen to create a geometric form. Once you've done that, you need to make sure that you close it. Um, you'll want to create a closing line from your last point to the very first point so it closes the shape. Once you've done that, as I've shown before, you can just take your finger, hold down on your shape and you get a pop-up, select copy, hold down with your finger on the screen and select paste and it'll paste it right on top. And then what we need to do is go to the transform studio and then depending on which side you started, so if you started on the left hand side we're going to be moving um, our X position but if you started on the bottom edge or the top edge, we'll be starting with our Y position. So in this case though, we're gonna start with the X position and then instead of changing the number, I'm just gonna select plus and then I'm gonna type in 2000, which is the size of my artboard. It will move that object that I've just copied and pasted directly to the exact same spot that the original element is, but on the opposite side of the artboard. We're gonna repeat the same process around the edges of the canvas. And since you're typing plus 2000 on the, X on the X axis to move something to the right, you'll type negative 2000 to move something to the left. And then same thing when it comes to the Y axis when we're moving up and down, you'll do plus 2000 to move down and you'll do negative 2000 or minus 2000 to move up. Keep in mind that if you put anything on a corner, it has to be duplicated three times and then move to each of the four corners using the transform tool in the exact same way that we've just done with this original element. Once you move each element into place, you can group it with a parent element by swiping each of the layers and then tapping group at the top of the layers menu as I showed earlier. Um, when we're looking through the interface of Affinity Designer. That way you can easily move elements up and down, left or right, without affecting your repeat layout. And once you finish filling out your edges, you can then start to fill the center. Um, I like to fill the repeat with shapes and filler elements, um, like lines, um, kind of working in like a jigsaw puzzle style for this particular repeat pattern just so that it kind of gives it that fun abstract geometric feel. You want to play around with the placement and maybe even the colors that you're using so that you can get the repeat to look exactly how you want it to. Um, and you will essentially be using Artboard 2 to see if your repeat is spaced nicely and you can make adjustments on Artboard 1 as you need as you're working through it. When you're ready to export, you're going to tap the Documents menu and then tap Export. And on the export page, you're gonna choose Artboard 1 as the area and PNG as your file type, or you can select JPEG, whatever is easiest or whatever you need. Um, and then you'll select a save location. And now that you're done, we'll move on to testing our repeat in a bigger document. 